He's an inspirational speaker and an extreme swimmer. He's just conquered his 100th swim from Robben Island to the mainland. His name is Ryan Stramrud, and he's taking grit to a whole nother level. Ryan joins me today on the Heavy Chef Hot Seat. Ryan, welcome back to Heavy Chef. You're no stranger to Thank our you. Heavy Chef community. And a massive congratulations on your big achievement. I mean, you've just crossed your 100th swim. Is it 100th swim? 100th Robben Island to Robin the Island mainland. Robben Island to the mainland. Yeah. What is the thought process or the preparation process for that? Because that's a big deal. Well, it, it's certainly a big deal to me, and I, I so appreciate everybody else making it a big deal as well. And, uh, you know, t swimming 100 Robben Island oh. crossings in a Speedo goggles and cap was never, ever um, a goal that I set myself. I mean, it would have been way too daunting. Um, generally, for open water swimmers, for many open water swimmers, swimming from Robben Island to the mainland, to Bloberg or wherever route you take, that would be the Everest of swims, and that's a massive accomplishment. And that's exactly what it was for me back uh, when I did my first. I thought it was totally out of reach. I didn't think I had it in me to do something like that. It was reserved for those super athletes. But yet I set it as a goal um, through uh, sometimes often these things come by mistake or challenges and uh, <laughs> dares. Yeah. Um, and I remember achieving my first one and that took me on an amazing journey. I'm um, in the swimming world around around the world taking on some really, really big challenges. And I have used the Robben Island crossing as the prime training ground for myself. So it's a big okay. swim. It's never routine. No single Robben Island is the same, but it throws everything at me. So the cold water, yes. number one on the list, the distance, which is 7.3 kilometers as the crow flies, the currents, the things that sting you, the things that scare you, the waves, everything is out there. So it's great body and mind conditioning. Um, and so because of all the training I do in more and more islands, all of a sudden I ended up with 50 Robin Islands and then 60 and then 70. Then people started saying, wow, you're going to hit 100. And I was yeah. like, no ways. But yep, I have uh, last week on the 23rd of May did my 100th crossing. What did that moment feel like when you finally reached the end? When I finally reached the end of my 100th crossing, let me tell you, there was great relief. Even though I've done it lots of times before, there's a lot of pressure on that swim because I have never failed on 99 swims and you you have to pay it great respect if you ever think you've got it in the bag before you've jumped in the water if you ever blase about it it's going to kick you in the pants that mm. much i know and of course for the hundredth we had to do a lot of planning because a lot of people were meeting on the beach and we had a lot of celebrities around who wanted to welcome me in we were on the boat yeah. lewis Pugh was there as well so we had bought all the champagne in advance and you know you, <laughs> you'd done everything <laughs> wrong um, and then jumped in and the water was quite chilly and it got pretty rough so when my feet eventually found the sand two hours and 18 minutes later oh uh, I was relieved Ryan a lot of you know this this affects the mind a lot mm -hmm. I mean the thought process of actually preparing for something <coughs> like this it's a big deal and what how do you prep yourself in terms of channeling your mind to actually motivate yourself to to do something like this yeah well let me tell you a little bit about how the mind works and and you know in in the cold specifically and this is something that i have been fascinated with and i've now done many many years of really really cold water right from what we term cold water which is it starts at around 18 degrees goes all the way down to the coldest i've ever swum is minus one degrees oh, wow. in antarctica um to prepare yourself you've got to practice and you have to understand a process you have to understand that firstly humans have not evolved very well to handle the cold. We've evolved exceptionally well to avoid it. Mm. So when you find yourself in what your mind perceives um, correctly as a life-threatening situation, it is designed to get you out very, very quickly. Now, what I've discovered is that this unbelievably powerful tool that we've got in our heads is so overprotective of, of, of us mm. um, that it holds us back not only when you try to do something in, ex, in extreme cold but also in all other areas of life it's designed yeah. to keep you safe and that is not only safe from walking into a fire or jumping off a cliff or doing something really stupid it's designed to keep you safe from the emotional pain that comes from failure mm. okay so when we have a big challenge 
and it's outside the comfort zone, it's not something we've done before, our minds naturally, at the back of our heads, we don't even know it, are saying, don't go that route yes. because there's a chance you're going to fail and that's going to hurt you emotionally. So mm -hmm. stick here to the comfort zone. Now, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but how the cold has taught me that, it's given me insights as to how powerful the mind is because when you go in extreme cold, it tells you that you're going to be dead within a minute if you do not get out. Yes. And you believe it because you're going, you're hyperventilating and there's pain, there's panic, there's fear and your head is spinning and everything's going wrong. And generally that overcomes you and you, you bail. What I've learned with a couple of mates is that we can extend that time. You can override that very overprotective function of the mind. And once you cross over that line where the mind says the end point is, there's a whole bunch of magic that happens on the other side that so few people are ever brave enough or ever have the, uh, the, the insight to actually step over that line and, and realize that there's a lot of space on the other side. Yes, don't go too far, but the magic happens here. Mm. I think that's incredibly inspiring because the, the saying mind over matter, I mean, affects mm. all of us, whether you're in business, whether you're in school, um, just an overall, an overall life. So yeah. thank you for sharing that. Now, pleasure. Ryan, I'm interested in knowing um, some of the work that you do because you're also an inspirational speaker. So how are you using your achievements or some of the experience that you have to kind of educate others? I'm, I'm absolutely blessed. So, I, you know, I run an advertising business. I sell advertising space, Stramroot Connect. That's my day job. But because of some of the situations that I've been in and challenges I've taken over the years, um, it's taken me around the world and I've gone, uh, you know, we've done some really silly stuff, found myself once in Siberia, um, where the air temperature was minus 33 degrees Celsius and I'd committed to take on a challenge in a, in a frozen lake that they'd cut out. And when I got there, I just thought, oh, I didn't do enough homework. The minus 33 was a mind boggle. But anyway, through all those kind of challenges, and there are a lot of those, um, I've learned so much about the mind and your ability to overcome certain defense mechanisms, uh, very defaulted defense mechanisms that we all have and we all have them for very good reason. But once you understand how overprotective they are, you can start to take a step back and go, but hang on, you know, I run a little business and this is in my case. Um, there's a big account out for pitch, but I'm not going to pitch for it because surely they need a big team. They need someone better than, than me and, and uh, you know what, my little business operates here, so I'm not even going to pitch. Mm. What I've learned is no, wrong attitude. Go in head first, pitch for it with confidence. And you know what? A lot of times I fail, I don't get it. Okay? But every now and then I succeed. But 100% of the time I learn. If you don't try, you have already failed. Mm. If you try and fail, you walk out with a learning. And it might be a horrible learning and mm. it might be a painful learning, but it's a learning that you're going to use and start developing a bank and a, a, a silo of knowledge that you start applying in future pitches or in future areas of your life. Mm. So I've put all of that together in a, a, a talk that I give, um, a number of talks, but one in particular, that I stand on stages in front of thousands and thousands of people. I literally just tell my story from how I was a big old couch potato um, getting fat and loving the remote <laughs> control and then taking on that first Robben Island challenge but first starting with a little swimming squad working my way up there and then obviously going to a lot of different heights and learning all these things about the mind as I have dabbled in cold and colder water and eventually in water which is meant to be humanly impossible yes. to extend your time in past a certain threshold so we've mm -hmm. proved that wrong not only myself it's always always done most of the things i've done have been with a group of crazy mates we all fire each other up um, but i've taken the learnings and packaged them into a brilliant talk that has a look at uh, i'll show some awesome videos of my antarctica challenges etc and it's, it's just something that people can really relate to and see and there's a lot of wow fact in it so i'm blessed to be able to help so many people mm -hmm. And now, Ryan, you're also uh, I'm an ambassador for SASI. Uh, you're big on ocean conservation. Right. Along the way, um, I'm sure you encountered a lot of, you know, plastics and things that are crippling mm -hmm. to, you know, our yeah. environment. Now, you also have a, a flop range, a flip-flop range. Correct. And these flip-flops are made out of tires? Yes, correct. So, I mean, spending so much time in the oceans, I see firsthand the kind of devastation that that us humans are causing and obviously it's hard to see it when you're swimming but I, I watch all the documentaries I work with the two oceans aquarium I work with the, the World Wildlife Fund as well and, and we, we see how how 
terrible as humans are. So, you know, you, yes. you, know, you know what I mean. We yes. throw everything into the rivers and we don't look back. That all ends up in the oceans, which ends up inside our sea life, which kills them. Yes. And uh, we're killing our planet. Um, so it's, it's something very dear to my heart. So besides doing lots of beach cleanups and awareness vibes, um, I developed a range of my own slip slops. I partnered with a company called Grit because grit is, is my thing, so it was just a match. They actually approached me and we designed a most beautiful range of slip slops or thongs. If, you, if you're outside, <laughs> so apparently anywhere else in the world they know what slip slops are, so let's call them thongs as well, um, which are upcycled products. So they're made okay. from car tires, the thread of car, um, old car tires. They're completely green. There is a little bit of, of uh, extra stuff that is necessary in it, but I want the amount of, if you have a look at the, the thongs or slip slop cells in this country, I want everyone wearing a pair of mine because that is actually doing good for the environment. It's taking existing rubber that's out there. It's not ending up in the rivers. It's ending up under your feet. Yes. They are, they're, an awesome, uh, they're, they're an awesome range. So take a look at my website. Definitely will. Now, Ryan, I know you get this question a lot. Mm -hmm. What is the next goal? Or what is the next thing that you're aiming to achieve? My next goal, uh, sure, I knew you were going to answer that. <laughs> my, you know, after doing my 100th Robin Island, my natural answer has to be I'm going to do my 101st Robin Island, <laughs> but I know that's not what you're looking for. Now, I have got some uh, fairly big plans, some swims around the world, but also there's a very big swim locally um, that's been on my radar to do for, for many years with, with a little bit of a twist to it. Um, I'm very reluctant to say it because, you know, I've, I, I live by, if you say it out loud, yes. I have to go and do it. And there's a lot that I would have put in place, uh, a lot of sponsors. I've got to find uh, before I can actually commit and take the time to do the training, condition my body, condition my mind and put all the teams around. But it will happen one day and it will happen right here in uh, the fairest Cape. Ryan, thank you so much for chatting to us today. Such a pleasure. Well, there you have it. You heard it here first from Heavy Chef. To find out more about our learning experiences, simply hop on to www.heavychef.com.